we'll come back to the perspective. Tenia, let's, let's walk out of uh, Tiga Dara uh, for a moment. Now, your first movie, your second movie, Arisan, 2003, mm -hmm. uh, that addresses the issue of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that it was a breakthrough at, at that time because not a lot of movie makers were able to want to talk that out in the open. Mm -hmm. um, it was clear self censorship mm -hmm. is not your, no. it's not part of what you, mm -hmm. your, it's not your principle, it's not what you stand up for. Now, 2003, this is th 2016. Uh, how, has, how do you think has the issue evolved? How do you think Indonesia is dealing with that now? This is not a new issue that we've been dealing with. As you know, the past few years, uh, the past uh, year, we talk about how there's been so much conversation uh, that's going on about LGBT mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, community. And you are uh, one of the person, you're an activist when it comes to signing up mm -hmm. about their LGBT rights. How do you think has situations has improved from there and now, or has it worsened, or I think it's changed. There is, n there is. It's very sad, actually. It's very, very sad um, because uh, there was an improvement from 2003 up to 2006, 2007, I think, and then I see a big, big, but a big slow and constant decline mm -hmm. ever since mm -hmm. and then now it's 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 the worst I think for Indonesia to have a uh, zero tolerance about uh, LGBT and other uh, people other groups who are different but uh, they're not violent towards you uh, they don't really uh, cross uh, each other's rights so there's zero minus tolerance these days and uh, what's really uh, it's 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 becoming more sad because uh, even it's already uh, involving school system I see that my son in uh, junior high uh, had the principal of the school talking especially about LGBT and how wrong it is, you know, to have that kind of lifestyle and to have that kind of orientation. It, it, is, it was so clear that uh, it's, um, you know, corrupting our children's mind in a way because then uh, even my son and, and his friends who are only 13 years old at that time, can have the consciousness of saying, oh my God, but they are human. If they cannot talk or discuss about uh, their alternative or their different orientation, they can get frustrated in school. Yeah. And high school itself, it's a really crazy game for us. Mm -hmm. Remember when mm -hmm. we were high school, mm -hmm. it's really the most uh, cruel yeah. system and if you are different and you are in that in that kind of, of system and then your school uh, also pushing you to become very very fake and very intolerant about those kind of differences then you know it's it will create a generation full of frustration yeah. generation that has uh, they're free to be you themselves. Know, free to be themselves. They, they, they are really uh, have no other resource to be open, to ask about their sexuality, to have the right information. Yeah. Because all they know is that that is wrong. I shouldn't do that. So there will be more underground uh, movements, movements or, or no, not movement, underground activity of mm -hmm. these kids. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I was so shocked listening to my son's story and I was just thinking there will be more underground activities of the kids who in my generation at least or in the generation before them at least can still they can still play together without being judged mm -hmm. they can discuss their differences in the you know what every school has the BP office it's mm -hmm. kind of like a counseling office yeah. And now, if the principal already said that it's wrong, it's a sin, and the school does not want to tolerate that kind of orientation and behavior, where could they go? Go. Where could they 
get a consolation, okay. a consultation. So it's, I think yeah. that's, I mean, I hate the Twitter world. I hate the social media world. Everybody's trying to be a winner in those worlds. But I, I see in reality is in my son's school. Yeah. And that is mm. really shocking to me. future generation is losing out mm -hmm. the most. Now you speak uh, earlier about information being available out there, mm -hmm. uh, especially in this day and age, mm -hmm. information is at the very uh, tip of their finger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you think the uh, mainstream media is, is doing enough for them to uh, broadcast the, the, the kind of information needed for them to know what it is mm -hmm. in, instead of judging mm -hmm. this group of people mm -hmm. or saying how bad this group of people the implications to have this mm -hmm. uh, kind of group in your society mm -hmm. but more of what are they why do we have to respect that mm -hmm. the choices that they make mm -hmm. you know do you think our mainstream media here in a country is doing is doing enough for that or do you think I, I think it's not enough I think it's really lacking um, I know some of my friends who made uh, an independent uh, media, online media, who did that. But you know, it should be a collective consciousness mm -hmm. from the whole media, whether it's independent or it's um, mainstream. Mm. Um, you know, I think what the media likes to do concerning LGBT is when there's a scandal, mm. and then they wrote about the scandal, highlighting the fact that people conducting the scandal has different sexual orientation yeah. not about the issue yeah. not about uh, the root of the problem itself so I think it's all becoming very very uh, absurd mm -hmm. uh, because we only we tend to become a society of you know we just want to side with the majority we just want to side with uh, the source of money or fundings and uh, it's dangerous I think for for Indonesia to have uh, to continue if we continue doing this it's it's dangerous it's we are losing our consciousness we are losing our common sense any plans of, uh, in your next project perhaps after the Gadara is all settled for you to be readdressing uh, these issues that we see that, that surrounds us Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, last year before I jumped into the uh, Tiga Dara project, last year I was uh, uh, releasing a documentary called Mami from Jambi, mm -hmm. Mak dari Jambi. It's a documentary that I produced and that won a documentary film festival in Bangkok mm -hmm. uh, last, last uh, March 2016 uh, as best documentary and it's only 40 minutes for zero uh, but it's it's just a proof that uh, what appears on the surface in our society doesn't really apply to the grassroots to mm -hmm. the to what happened in mm -hmm. reality it's a story about a mother who has a transgender uh, a child uh, that moves from Jambi to Jakarta and then uh, we follow her journey to visit her transgender child in Jakarta after not seeing her for almost eight years. Mm -hmm. So the last time she saw her was when she was still a he, leaving Jambi. And then he, And obviously and then, that, has, yes, that has changed a lot. That changed a lot. And then she stayed in the uh, small apartment of the uh, transgender son and then uh, mixed with all the her transgender friends even went to Taman Lawang because the the child is now a very open-minded activist uh, LGBTIQ activist that admits that you know when I first came to Jakarta I didn't have any money I f finished all my uh, savings. savings and then I didn't have any choice I had to stand here and try to make a living so uh, that's uh, so not but not always by choice but sometimes society pushes you into yes, that brink into, and, uh, into that brink brink and make that decision yeah and then I was thinking of doing a narrative of doing a feature film based on the story of uh, Mak Dari Jambi 
All right. Uh, Nia, thank you so much for spending some time here. I know you've been very busy. Good luck thank with you. your post-production. We're looking My forward pleasure. to the mini concert uh, yes. that's coming up in July. 20th of July and 20th the soundtrack July. album. That's coming out on July 20th and a mini mm -hmm. concert. And the movie itself will be released in September. September. You've got to look out for that. Thank you for watching. My name is Florence Armain and this has been The Perspective.